this field had ancient beginnings. The first known example of a control system was in 1400 BC. The ancient Egyptians used a bucket-shaped vessel to make a water clock. The size of the hole in the bottom and the shape of the container controlled and steadied the flow of water to make an accurate time indicator. Another major step forward was in the 1850s. Until then, ship's rudders had been controlled by a series of mechanical connections from the helm. As ships got bigger, the hydrodynamic forces on the rudder and the gear ratios became so great that it was slow and difficult to steer a large vessel. French design engineer Jean-Joseph Farcot coined the term servo moteur when he invented a system which controlled a rudder using a specialized engine. The need for control systems increased greatly with the advent of electrical power. The electric arc lamp provided urban lighting on State Street in Schenectady, New York from the 1880s until the early 20th century. It depended on a constant, regulated flow of electricity. In the power station in Building 31 on Erie Boulevard, feedback circuits fed signal back into the amplifier circuit, which helped produce more uniform power transmission, even with extreme outside temperature variations. Schenectady became a testing ground for new control technologies as Thomas Edison and Charles Steinmetz conducted their work here. Control engineers solved problems on everything from steam generators to the vacuum tube. In science, we learn how to analyze and explain the behavior of something which usually is physical, and we stop there. The control engineer then says, now that I understand how that physical system works, how can I add to that, this is the man-made part, so that it will perform better or it will produce a, a future that I like better. So that's the engineering approach, but it is also the heart of control engineering, which Hal was uh, a pioneer in. You know, virtually all the electronic devices we use, the cars are filled with different ways of uh, using a term that my dad used a lot, feedback, to make sure that uh, things were going the way you wanted them to go. But feedback, properly analyzed and controlled, becomes a powerful tool in the hands of the modern engineer. Feedback can accurately, efficiently, and reliably govern guidance systems. Servo systems, power supplies, the list of applications is limitless.